magnificent, aren't they? These marvelous giant statues are called Moai. Most are enormous. Some are more than 30 feet tall and a few reach 40 feet and beyond. These colossal Moai are the world's most recognizable statues. The irony is that these huge statues were carved on the world's smallest and most remote inhabited place, Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui. Hundreds of Moai stand as silent, awe-inspiring sentinels in many places around this tiny volcanic island. In the water-filled caldera of an extinct volcano, hundreds more statues lie in various stages of being carved. They patiently await a perilous journey that will never come. For the ancient Polynesians who created these sleeping giants are no more. For more than 20 years, archaeologist Joanne Van Tilburg and Rapa Nui artist Christian Aravelo Pacarati have thoroughly documented every one of the more than 900 statues on Easter Island. Christian is a descendant of the original statue makers of Rapa Nui. The collaboration of Joanne and Christian is a unique and powerful blend of science and art. I'm here on Easter Island in the interior portion of Rana Raraku Quarry, which is a very, very special place. Um, the place where uh, the vast majority of almost 1,000 sculptures were carved on Rapa Nui. Joanne and Christian can't do all of the work alone, so they gather a team of volunteers, each with a skill or specialty that benefits the project. What we're doing here is we're, we're working on a second phase of a project, which is a, a mapping project. Um, essentially, the interior portion of this quarry requires extremely thorough mapping because it has a lot to teach us. There's information here not only about the statues, but about the people who carved the statues and the techniques that they used to carve the statues. So we're using very space-age technology, digital technology, to both map and document not only the sculptures, but the quarry itself and the quarrying techniques. Ranu Waraku, a volcanic crater in the southeast portion of the island, is a sacred site. Here, Rapa Nui artists carved nearly 900 statues. About half of them were removed and transported to ceremonial sites in all parts of the island. You see in the form is the elongated rectangular facial uh, aspect but then you see the body quite curved. You see the curved line. You see the width of the shoulders and the narrowness at the base. So you're getting almost a kind of heart-shaped, if you will, very naturalized form. When we see some of the later sculptures, you'll see that they're much more straight-lined and certainly more rectangular. We're coral encrusted, so they would have been white. Then the, the fascia that runs across the front is red scoria, so it would have been a nice reddish color. Coral white and red eyes in place and the red top knots on top you would have had a rather vivid, colorful sight. The art are why in a unique standardized style. Even so, many have individual characteristics, such as a broad or a narrow face, or a short or a long torso. Statue, uh, one is statue equally the same as another. I mean, they are all different. They all look like uh, generically people, or whatever you call it, but they are all different. There, there are always some little different between one even in the aesthetic, uh, the size, the volume of the body, and, uh, the weight maybe, the style of the details around the nose, finger, uh, belly, neck, chin, uh, head, uh, type. There's a fairly good outline now of the prehistory of Easter Island and surprisingly enough these statues, most of them were made in a relatively short period of time. I mean, we're talking about at the maximum a thousand years, probably less than that. So there's a compression of time here, which always gives me the feeling of a compression of an explosion of energy. That's a pretty short time for a culture to, to, to come to this kind of expression. You might think because they are carved from stone, the Moai are virtually immortal, but they are not. Constant wind and frequent rain wear away their fragile surfaces. Birds leave their marks, which encourage the growth of massive amounts of destructive lichen. Burrowing insects enlarge cracks in the rock. Free-ranging animals rub up against the statues, as do insensitive tourists. 
About 35,000 visitors come to Easter Island every year, and each one of them wants their picture taken with the Moai. In short, these magnificent statues are eroding rapidly. Observations of statue context, stone surface condition, and other vital conservation information reveal serious problems. The Easter Island Statue Project collects a good deal of information on the condition of the, of the Moai, of the statues of Rapa Nui or Easter Island. Um, one of the things we look at, for example, is the condition of the surface of the stone and whether it's pulverized, whether it's deteriorated in, in terms of delamination or uh, many other factors. We look at the, the condition of the stone relative to the conglomerate that's included within it or that has weathered out from it. We look at the color of the stone. We look at water retention um, under the surface of the stone. We look at the growth of lichens, for example, on the surface and um, damage that can be done by uh, the movement of wind and rain, all of the environmental considerations that um, have been important in understanding the way in which the statues have softened and changed over time. Statues are already at least 50% eroded. And it is amazing the statues have been getting eroded into even the period that we have been recorded in them. We have lost so much surface detail over the last 20 years that it is heartbreaking. There's a tremendous urgency to what we're doing. I think some of the work that we're doing here is going to be an important contribution to the agencies and institutions who have the responsibility of caring for the statues on Easter Island. Tourists come here. I think it's very crucial to protect the resource which is the statue um, that brings them here. And our information can do that because in addition to all sorts of details about the statue style and material and so on, we're also collecting status reports on the condition of the statue. These can be used by conservators to preserve the statues. Moai, in my opinion, is, is absolutely in, in danger. It needs an urgent uh, help all the mines. Can it be protected? Should they be protected? And if so, how? And at what cost? And who should pay for it? The powers in charge have to make really tough decisions about which statues to save and which to let go back to nature. And I think we can help people make those decisions. I think our data, the Easter Island Statue Project data, can help people make those decisions for sure. Magnificent, aren't they? These marvelous giant statues are called Moai. Most are enormous. Some are more than 30 feet tall and a few reach 40 feet and beyond. These Kassel Moai are the world's most recognizable statues. The irony is that these huge statues were carved on the world's smallest and most remote inhabited place, Easter Island also known as Rapa Nui. Hundreds of Moai stand as silent, awe-inspiring sentinels in many places around this tiny volcanic island. In the water-filled caldera of an extinct volcano, hundreds more statues lie in various stages of being carved. 